you know, uh, I've been introduced before. I can't say I've ever had that introduction. You know, if people want to stay around after, we'll talk about uh, some of those stories that Madeline said <laughs> weren't all good. Yeah, Madeline, uh, <laughs> when she was lieutenant governor, and uh, I was a member of the Senate, and lieutenant governors aren't supposed to talk, and senators are, uh, she always made her views known. <laughs> there were a lot of men in the Senate there, and... Uh, she made her views known. <laughs> it was, uh, that was a great, great introduction. You know, I want to say just a couple of things. You know, Elaine, you, when you were talking, where are you? Oh, there you are. You were recounting what the struggles are when people run for office. And it's all true. And I think a lot of us who uh, are in the midst of a campaign or are thinking about a campaign after we listened to her, uh, started thinking, wait a minute, because it's all true. It's really, really hard work, and you get that aspiration to serve, to be involved, to make a difference. Uh, but once that happens, uh, you have to go face the day, and you're on your own. There's that moment where you've been talking to lots of people, but there's a moment when you have to decide, and when you make that decision, it's the loneliest moment in your political life. And you don't know how you're going to do it. You know, Keisha, you've been through this. And the thing that I think helps so much with Emerge is that you just have this sense that there are people who have your back. And that as foreign as this experience is, is it, as it is, and without the kind of support uh, that men have received where it's expected, uh, you have that support from an institution that has now won 92 percent. It's pretty extraordinary. But the other thing that was amazing to me listening was you, uh, Warren. It was really, no, it was really. Here's what was so wonderful for me as I listened to you, because I think it's you. You really captured, I think, for a lot of us what politics has to be about in Vermont and what it isn't in Washington, it's really listening. It's really engaging with the people in your community where they're at. It's not telling them the way it's got to be. It's not showing you're the smartest person. It's not asserting that you know the answer on how you're going to get a better health care system. You've got to talk about all of those things. But the beginning of persuasion is listening and empathy. And uh, I'm going to clue you in. A lot of men aren't so good at that, OK? <laughs> and a lot of politicians aren't so good at that. Uh, but Emerge folks are good at that. And you're really good at that. And what's so important about that is it's missing now. You know, you have a dialogue in Washington that's so different than what we have here in Vermont. Uh, but it's a kind of performance-based uh, presentation. It's uh, in-your-face kind of presentation. It's, it's the lacking in respect. And what it leads to is a breakdown in dialogue where instead of taking that time, as you do when you knock on a door, and your first question is, how are you? It's not telling them who, what you want them to do. You begin to build the bonds of trust, which are profoundly important to restore if we're going to have a democracy uh, that works. Uh, and I got to say, you know, emerge with its history. And Madeline, thank you for you know founding it here in Vermont. Uh, is fundamentally important because we can't do it alone, and there has to be institutions that are there to sustain the effort and to be there when that person is ready. And you know, the other side has understood that in some pretty nefarious ways. You know, one of the things we're all horrified about right now in Washington is we've got an authoritarian, anti-democratic United States Supreme Court. It's a catastrophe. 
all right? That didn't happen by accident. It happened because years ago, a lot of very conservative Republicans, the Koch brothers, decided they wanted to get a very conservative Supreme Court. And they went about it by establishing the, fe the Federalist Society. The Federalist Society then started creating this crackpot uh, legal theory called originalism. And basically what that was about was getting justices who would subscribe to it, and it meant that they had to essentially make it clear that when Roe came up, if they were on the court, Roe was gone. They had to make it clear that if a Clean Air Act came up when they were on the court and it was allowed by Congress, they were going to overturn that. That's another decision they just made. We can't use the Environmental Protection Agency to protect our air or our water. That's what they said. That didn't happen by accident. And what Emerge is doing is understanding that getting good women candidates doesn't happen by accident. There's a structure, there's an organization where there's a humility behind that because we understand that it takes this institution to help us get to 92%, which we have today. So that's what's really, really, really important. The other thing, you know, I want to say something about Madeline and then Becca. You know, Madeline, uh, it was amazing when you won. I was there uh, in the State House uh, in 1984, and you mentioned, it's not in your bio, but I was there in 1982, uh, when in the face of extraordinary challenge, you stayed the course and ran for governor and made us proud in that race. And you lost. And you came back in 1984. You came back. And this was one of the most thrilling moments in my life, okay? I was, it was 1984, and the excitement in the State House, in the presence of women from all across this state to celebrate the election of our first female governor, and what was so exciting to me in that moment to be there and to witness it was that it was not just about you being the first woman. It was women knowing they had a seat at the table and the things that were so important to them and had been ignored so long, child care, more for education, equality in education, the environment, which you were an early champion on, all of those were going to be front and center because this person was elected in 1984 to be governor. And we're all grateful to, for that. And that is a lasting contribution that you've made to the state of the nation. But the other, the other feeling or an experience I had then is an experience I'm having now with you, Becca. Politics, it's rough, especially now. We are dismayed about what's going on in Washington. And how do you sustain yourself? You have to have a candidate around whom you can organize. And then, through that opportunity, create a sense of renewal and create a sense of hope. And in Vermont, in this campaign, the candidate in the campaign that renewed that sense of hope for all of us in the state, which is so essential to us being successful as people, was Becca Bowen. <laughs> Becca Bowen. So I am so excited. I really am that uh, uh, Becca is going to be uh, hopefully I'm talking hopefully about me. You're going to make it, but i got to get there too. As our first woman serving us in the United States House of Representatives, Becca Ballant. Thank you.